Thanks for tuning in. This is podcast number 11. And I appreciate everybody taking the time to, to, to listen to these. And uh, also for the people that have written in and given me suggestions or comments on, on the ones that I've had before. I really appreciate that. And uh, it, d- it gives me hope that people do want to get better at the sport. And that's really what I want to try to do is provide that pathway uh, for people to understand that uh, anybody and whatever their, their, their riding ability is, is that we have ways to, to, uh, to get them better in the sport, whether it's, it's uh, your skills development, your personal development, um, your racing development, your coaching development, any of those things. And we want to be able to show that. So I, I appreciate people taking the time to, uh, to do that. This podcast uh, really is the last thing in our fundamentals. And uh, this is, uh, we've had our fundamental series, and I'll, I'll go through that again in just a second. But this is the last step of it. And before I tell you what that is, let's revisit uh, what we've had so far. And uh, the first order of the sport was our vision and focus. Uh, then we had motor controls, bike placement, brakes, uh, and then we just had body position and body timing. And this, this last one that we're going to talk about is a little bit of the icing on the cake. And it, it becomes something that um, we actually don't have to talk a lot about. We don't have to, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this one because there's a, there's a very easy way to, op- to, to overcomplicate it and we're not going to do that. But it is absolutely in our fundamentals because it, it, it had become a big deal as people went quicker and they realized that <clears throat> they needed to, to adjust um, for the bike they're on or for the lap time that um, this was a big deal. So what are we talking about? We're talking about turn and rate and turn in point. That's the last order of our sport. And notice how I differentiated, right? Turn in rate and turn in point. They are two different things. Absolutely, they're different things. And if you come and work with me, you'll, or you come to one of the Rick days, you'll, you'll find out that, that we, don't, we don't have one turn in point for, for everybody, right? We just don't tell everybody, hey, this is the place where everybody turns in. I don't care what the speed is. I don't care what bike you're on. Everybody turns in at this point because it's, it's different. And it has to be different. Let's think about that. If, if, if you're doing, let's make it up, you're doing a two-minute lap time somewhere, and now you're doing a minute 45 lap time, you're covering the same distance in less time. Well, if you're covering the same distance in less time, your actions have to start earlier. So it means you're going to go to the brakes earlier, your eyes have got to work earlier, your body's got to move earlier, and the bike has to be turned in earlier as well. So that, that's why... We're, we're, that's why we'll go back and that's why we look at where bike placement is because it's such a big deal. There, there's that place. There's a goal, right? There's that goal where we want to be. And as you go quicker, your turn-in rate and turn-in point has to be adjustable so you can get to that same point. So <clears throat> let's start breaking that down. And again, I, I'm not going to overcomplicate this one. I'm not going to beat this one to death. Let's make it simpler. Let's make it very, very simple. So what is the difference between turn and rate and turn and point? Well, turn and point is very simple. It's the point at which you start to turn in for the corner. So it's, it's the place on the track where, where the, you, you take the bike off center and the bike starts to turn in so you can get to that, that exit direction. Turn in rate. Turn in rate is the rate at which the bike turns in off center to match the radius or arc of the corner. So now we're going to start getting into it. So turn and rate, turn and point. You see the difference there. So what corners require what? Well, it, it's, it's pretty simple. A short radius or short arced corner requires a later, quicker turn in. Because it's a, it's because, because it's a shorter arc. It's a shorter radius. It, it requires that later turn in. Where a longer radius corner, a longer radius corner, a longer arced corner, you can turn in sooner and slower because that's what the radius dictates. You've got a lot, you have more time to deal with it and you can, you can load that tire over a longer period of time. So when you have a corner um, that's very sharp, um, you have a corner that, 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 has, a, that has an arc in it, um, um, a, a a radius that's essentially very steep, then the turn-in, the turn-in point and turn-in rate. The turn-in point is late, 
and the turn-in rate is quicker because it needs to be. So when we have a longer radius corner, right, where the arc is, is more gentle over a longer period of time, we'll turn in earlier and slower because we can load the tire over a longer period of time. We can carry more overall speed to that point. And essentially, we have the time available to do it. So I don't want to overcomplicate that. And, and just, again, it all boil, it all comes backwards, right? Where do we want, where does the, where do we want the bike to be? And we're going to essentially draw that line backwards to be able to find that point. So Again, let's not, let's not completely overcomplicate that. Different, and different bikes um, essentially require this as well. And for two reasons. One, a slower bike is going to cover the same distance in more time. So they can turn in later and, and quicker. So if you, you've got a corner where you're riding, say, a, a Ninja 300, a KTM bike, because it's traveling the same distance in less in distance in more time than say a, a Graves R1, then because you're, you've, you've got the time available, the bike's not traveling as fast, you'll turn in later and quicker. Graves R1, right, traveling at a very, very high rate of speed, you have to start your actions earlier to get to that same point. So the faster the bike, the earlier you're gonna, you're gonna wanna turn in because you have less time available to do it. The slower the bike, Less less feet per second you're covering, the later that you're gonna later you're gonna uh, want to turn in. So instead of thinking speed, think time, and I think that'll change your thought process on that. Is that when you've got less time available to do it, it has to happen earlier, and that'll really that'll really make a big difference. Even if you're on the same bike, but now you're going a quicker lap time, your actions still have to happen. A actions have to start uh, earlier. So I, I don't want to overcomplicate it. So turn and rate, turn and point, sharper the radius, right? The, the, the um, later the bike can be turned and the quicker the bike can be turned. The longer the radius the corner, the earlier and slower the bike can be turned in. And there's really some, there's really some report cards that allow us to figure that out. The first one is, is as we take the bike off center, we want to, we want to get to that slowest part of the corner, right? We want to get to that direction change. And we want to make it in one linear movement, right? So as our body comes down, it's one linear, um, uh, one linear motion down to maximum lean angle. Yeah, you might be at maximum lean angle for a long time. Yeah, if that's what the radius dictates, sure. But you want to get down there in one motion. You want to go down there, pick the bike back up, right? Go down, pick it up, go back down, pick it up, or you, or, or you don't want to have to slam lean angle at it in a hurry because it was late. You want to try to make that one linear motion. And what allows us to do that is back, it's back to our motor controls again. It's the first 5% of our movement. So if our first 5% of our body movement is initially fairly slow, one, two, three, four, five, then that's what allows, what, one, two, three, four, five percent, if that's what allows our body to adjust for that corner radius. If you go from straight up and down to looking like Marquez in a quarter second, well, it would take a very, very sharp radius corner to make that happen. So that initial body movement is slower than you think, so you can adjust for that corner radius. So I don't want to beat this one up too much. Um, I want to make it fairly simple, but realize this is kind of icing on the cake, right? On turn and rate and turn and point. The big takeaway from this is the faster you go, the earlier it has to happen. And and regardless of the bike you're on, the quicker the lap time is going to be, the sooner your actions have got to start. That's the one big takeaway. Second big takeaway is um, adjust for the corner radius. Corners that come after a long straightaway because you have the time, you can turn in sooner and slower because you have the time. You can load the tire over a longer period of time. Corners that, that have a... Um, have that shorter radius, right? That that shorter, that short, sharp radius um, or arc, you'll turn in later and quicker. Corners that have a long, long radius or long, long arc, you'll turn in sooner and slower. So let's let's not beat it up over that. But again, this is part of being a different rider for every type of a corner and taking advantage of what that corner has to offer. So you've got some good takeaways. How you get to maximum lean angle should be one linear fashion and make your initial movement slower than you think. Yeah, the faster you go, that initial movement's got to be quicker, but 
you start working on some of that body timing that we talked about last time as well of when you want to arrive onto that knee, but your first 5% of your body movement still has to be able to adjust. So thanks for tuning in. A lot more podcasts on the way.